In this problem, we have a block B that's sliding along a slippery, icy surface that has no friction, and it hits this slender rod uh, of mass 4 kilograms and length 5 meters um, with an initial speed of 14 meters per second. Um, if the angular velocity of the bar just after the impact is 2.85 radians per second, what is the coefficient of restitution between the slender bar and the block? So what we have to do in this problem is we have to determine this um, coefficient of restitution uh, for that impact between block and the bar that results in um, the bar having an angular velocity of um, 2.85 radians per second after the, right after the impact. So we're going to apply conservation of momentum. And um, what we're going to do is we're going to do everything in terms of O, which is the top point over here. And this is the point about which this slender rod is uh, rotating. Um, and um, so that, that'll be our reference. So what we're going to do is we're going to set H O uh, of 1 being equal to H O of 2. So 1 we define as right before impact, so that's when this block is right here, um, but it hasn't contacted yet, right before impact. So at this point, we have the block having a velocity and, and the slender bar being stationary. No rotation, no, no velocities, right? Um, whereas in state 2, this is right after the impact, um, we have uh, both the block and the bar having a velocity, right? Um, that's right after the impact, and, and the impact is represented by the con coefficient of restitution e, which is what we're tasked to find. So um, we now have to come up with expressions for uh, h, right? Um, and again, this would be the vectorial um, form. Uh, we're going to reduce it down and solve it into scalar equations, but for now we're going to keep the vector equations. Um, so h01 uh, is going to be equal to mb times r of c with respect to o cross vb, and this is vb1, right? Um, why is this? Uh, well, this is because um, at 1, we nothing. We don't care about uh, this this bar, right? Because this bar is stationary; it's not moving. So we only care about b. And what we're saying here is that uh, about o, um, we have this block with a velocity, right? So m b. This is the mass of b. R of c with respect to o cross v b one. Um, that's uh, this radius down that way uh, crossed to the velocity of at this point but the velocity of b right which is the initial velocity of the block which are given in the problem is 14 meters per second right now we know that these two are perpendicular because our c with respect to o points downwards and then vb points to the right so we're going to get a vector that actually points out of the page perpendicular to it and that's how we're going to get rid of um, essentially the um, the vectors, right? Uh, let's look at 2. So h o uh, 2, this is going to be equal, it's going to have two components, right? So it's going to have one component due to the velocity of this block over here, so the momentum of this block over here, and then one due to the um, slender rod, right? So let's start with b. So mb times, again, this is going to be um, r of c with respect to o, cross to vb, but this time vb2, right, the velocity after impact, which we're also given, plus we're going to have the component due to that slender rod. So this is going to be uh, i naught times omega a2, right, and this is um, i, so this is, we can just replace this um, for a slender rod pinned about O, um, this is one third m l squared, which is also equal to one third uh, m a l squared, right? Um, and omega here, this we can also represent as uh, v c divided by L, 
right? Because um, V equals to omega cross R, since omega in this case is going to go in this direction, um, we know that, so out of the page, um, R is going to be in the downwards direction uh, as follows. Uh, then we know that velocity is going to point to the right, um, and so um, the vector form of um, VC will, uh, omega will be VC over L in the uh, k hat direction, right? Um, so that's going to be the vector for omega 2, omega A2. Um, and uh, this is supposed to be VC2, right? Because it's at the second state. There is no omega at the initial state, at uh, the initial at 1, right? Uh, so we've now come up with uh, the um, this equation. We're going to combine everything together and put everything into one main equation. So we have mb times uh, r of c with respect to o cross vb1 is equal to mb times r of c with respect to o cross v b two plus i naught, which is one third m a l squared times v c two over l and then this is going to be in the k hat direction right um we can now so we we now know that um, given uh, that um, r of c with respect to o is equal to negative l in the j hat direction, um, you can solve for these, and that um, v is always going to be in the um, so. Going back to the diagram here, we know that R of C with respect to O is in the negative J hat direction, points down that way, and it has magnitude of L, right, because that's the length. Um, we know that the velocity is always going to be in this direction over here, right, um, to the right. So that is in the positive um, I hat direction. Um, so V hat, the unit vector in the direction of V, is equal to I hat. Um, we know that these cross products will yield everything in the positive direction k hat direction. So we can actually simplify this, um, these cross products and have them as direct multiplications because the vectors are perpendicular and the resulting vector is going to be uh, in the k hat direction. So we have mb uh, times l v b1 is equal to mb times L V B two uh, and one third M A L squared times V C two over L. So in reality, this simplifies to just L. And everything is going to be in the k hat direction. Right, so we now have an equation that links. So we know all the masses. Um, we know L. So we link these velocities, right? The VB one, VB two, and VC two. Right. Um, we said that VC one equals to zero. That's our other equation, right? Because um, the bar C does not rotate initially. So at one, there is no velocity at C before impact. But now we need to find some more equations, right? And again, due to that impact, we can use the, we need to find the coefficient of restitution, so we can use the relation between the velocities and the coefficient of restitution, right? So, coefficient of restitution, we know that E coefficient of restitution is going to be equal to VC2 minus VB2 divided by uh, VB1 minus VC1. And we just said that VC1 is equal to zero. 
because um, there is no velocity initially. Uh, so we can actually simplify this expression um, to the following. VB2 is equal to VC2 minus VB1 times E. Right, so now we have an expression for VB2 in terms of VC2 and VB1. Right, and we can use this. We can take this um, expression for VB2 and plug it back into this equation uh, up here. Right, because um, we're given uh, VB1. Uh, we're also given, um, so if you go back to the question, uh, we're given the initial velocity. Um, 14 meters per second, and we're also given the uh, the velocity of the bar right right after impact. Um, so that's VC2, right? We're given VC2, we're given VB1. Um, we can find we need to we don't know VB2, right? So we can replace VB2 in these equations with things that we know and the coefficient of restitution, which is what we're trying to solve for. So we introduce this into this equation so we can actually solve for it, right? And we can do that, and everything simplifies uh, to the following equation. one equals to mb times l times vc2 minus vb1 times e plus l over 3 m a v c 2. Now we can further simplify everything uh, to the following. v b 1 m b times e plus 1 is equal to v c 2 times m b plus m a over 3. And uh, from this equation, um, we, we can solve for e, right, in terms of v c 2 and v b 1, and then m, m, and m. Now the last thing, which is a minor detail, uh, VC2, we don't, we're not given VC2, right? We're given the angular velocity of the bar. And from this angular velocity, using this equation here, we can find um, VC2, right? So VC2 is equal to um, omega A2 times L, right? Um, so this is going to be equal to um, omega A2 which is uh, 2.85 radians per second times L, which is 5 um, meters. And this is going to be equal to 14.28 meters per second. So now we have VC2, we have VB1, we have the masses, and we can solve for E. So using plugging everything into the top equation, so this equation over here, we get the following. 6 kilograms times 5 meters times 14 meters per second is equal to four kilograms times five meters times VC2, um, which is what we have just calculated, 14.28 meters per second minus VB1, which is 14 meters per second times E, plus 5 meters over 3 times ma, which is 4 kilograms times 14.28 meters per second. And with this, 
And so for E, E is equal to 0 0.7. And this is our final answer.